So following on from the along from the last video, let's build a circuit to discharge a cap into a transformer, conventional transformer, and a bitoroidal transformer. So the way I usually go with this um, is just to set it up and see that all the, the switches are working. And right away, we see that this one isn't. We know that this works. It's not the LED. So once you know it's not the LED, then you can put it in. Let's look at the other one. So we see the other channel on here is working, but this channel isn't working. And so from there, you just work your way backwards. The most likely thing is that one of the channels on our solid state relay is fried or not incorrectly. So I'm going to swap it out with this one and see if this one works. If it's not that, then you go here and see is, you know, you don't even, you just use the power from the, from the input here. Will that light an LED here? And if that doesn't work, then it's either your connections or you fried one of the pins on the Uno. So this one's not working. Give me a minute. So the problem turned out to be either this couldn't set well down here or one of the bus lines on the board is fried. It just wouldn't work down there. But once I moved everything up, now everything works. So we have all our switches, and now we just need to um, put together the, the logic and the software. But we kind of have it already. So you can see these will be your positive and negative lines to charge a cap. So you'll make and break a positive and negative, charge your cap, and it shuts off. And now a cap's just sitting there. And then you discharge the cap through a coil. So next, let's just charge a cap and discharge it. And, you know, it's fun, like, working at 2 volts so that nothing, you know, if you get it wrong, it's not like, oh, no. So I just thrown in a, a 10 UF cap, and we see it's charging. So it charges for a second, and then those lines break, and it's just leaking out through the meter. So now what do we want to do? Now we want to discharge the cap. So how do we do that? So once these lines are broken here, this is just a cap sitting there on the breadboard. So if we take this line, put it through a switch here, connect it to the other leg, then the cap shorts itself. So let's do that now. So you can see there now we got the positive going out to one part of the switch, and then the other part of the switch goes to the negative and it discharges. It charges up, and then it's isolated, and then it discharges. Now what do we want to do? Now we want to take this yellow line and replace it with an inductor, with our coil. And once we have that, then you have a capacitor and an inductor. You have your LC tank circuit. Um, the only caveat I would mention here is when we start to you know, do this and, and uh, gather some data, you want to use alternating current AC solid state relays. If they're DC, then this thing will never be able to go negative. It'll just it'll just bleed out at zero. Um, so you need to make sure that your solid state relays, uh, these are Comus AC 37s, are AC relays, not just DC relays. So I replaced that yellow line with just this kind of random coil, and you see we got the same thing going on. The cap's charging, and then it discharges through the coil, and it's an LC tank circuit. So as it discharges, it doesn't just go like you see on the meter. It goes like that. <laughs> I like the sound effect. So let's even before going to the transformer, let's just have a little more fun with this and just make sure that everything is, is working the way we want it to. So what's the resonant frequency of an LC tank circuit? It is, from memory, I think it's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC, the inductance and the capacitance. Um, so if you have just, instead of 1 over, if you just have 
um, one half pi times the uh, square root of inductance and capacitance. That gives you the duration in seconds from one wave crest to the next. So again, what happens with an LC tank circuit is this discharges and let's say we're at 10 volts. You, we won't be able to see it on the meter because it happens so quickly, but it discharges and establishes a magnetic field here. And you would think, well, a cap, you know, it only goes to zero. There's nothing less than zero. It doesn't care about zero. It's got no problem. It just goes right through zero. So if you're at 10 volts, it goes through zero down to about, depending on the Q factor, say negative seven, negative eight, negative nine volts or more. Um, again, dependent on the Q factor, the better the Q factor, the um, closer back to 10. So 10 and then down to like negative eight and then, then it's fully is sent through as much current as it's going to and the magnetic field that's stored here reverses and it starts going back so that the voltage in the cap starts climbing and goes back up to say seven and then to negative six and then to five and then negative four and so it's ac and you can also say that it is it is ringing just like a bell and a bell you hit it and then it slowly gets softer over time but it has a particular note the whole time. The note doesn't change. That's the resonant frequency. And whether the bell gets soft quickly or not is analogous to the Q factor. So if you bing hit a bell, it might go bing. If you put a damp washcloth on it, it'll go bing. And that's the dampening of the LC tank circuit. So let's measure the induction here and the capacitance here and we can figure out about how long to pulse this thing to go from wave crest to wave crest. So I measure the inductions, induction of this as 9.685 millihenries. Now if you hit the frequency button here it changes a little. Um, 9.682 or 9.688, I'll call it 9.685. I measure the capacitance of our capacitor is 9.78 microfarads. And again, with frequency, it changes a bit. 769, 784, 785. Let's call it 9.77. Okay, so this is from memory, but it's it's at least giving something reasonable. So um, here's the inductance in millihenries. So that's the inductance in henries. Here's the capacitance in microfarads. That's capacitance then in farads. So inductance times capacitance is that. The square root of that is that. Pi is that. So 2 times pi times this is that. 1 over that gives us our frequency. So this has a resonant frequency of 517 hertz. Now I'm actually more interested in the time from wave crest to wave crest, which is this many seconds or that many milliseconds. And you know, now that I look at it, since I set it up that way, we can kind of like, suppose we didn't have a, a 10 UF cap. Suppose we put in a one UF cap, what's going to happen? There's our frequency. There's time in milliseconds from wave crest to wave crest. So it's kind of neat that that's, that's all set up. But let's, um, let's confirm that, the, this is, that I did this correctly. Um, so what does this mean? This means that for that cap and for that coil, if we discharged it for 1.93 milliseconds, the cap would start at 10, we go negative and we come back to however close to the starting voltage it would get, maybe back to 7. So if we discharge it here, it, it will go 
and you should see about 7 on the cap, 7 volts if you're starting at 10. If you divide that in 2, then that should be where the cap is most negative. So 10, say negative 8, or something like that. If you divide that in 4, that would be where the cap first discharges and hits 0. So those are the points that I want to look at. And then we'll know that we'll know if we calculated this correctly. And you know, it may not go to 8, it might go to negative 6 or something, and then you may have to fish around and oh, it's actually at negative 6.3 if you know the frequency is actually 527. As I said, there's there's other capacitance and inductance. The last thing I'd point out here is there's one you know parameter missing in all this, isn't there? And what's that? That's resistance. So resistance doesn't come into play with with resonant frequency, and that I mean it, you could say it's analogous, but it's the same thing as you know like a bell. If you ring the bell and then you ring it with the washcloth on it the note of the bell doesn't change. It's the same note. It's just whether the bell rings clear and for a long time or only rings shortly with damp cloth. So that would be, that's why resistance doesn't come into the, the um, resonant frequency calculation. So here I just threw together a little program to see if this is doing what it should be. And so what we have here is we have a for loop. I'm just going to have it go through once. And I just want to have it do this and then us be able to get out of it and, and look at it. And later on, I'll want to do it perhaps more than one time. So here, pin 9 is when we're charging the cap. And to an extent, these durations are irrelevant. It's just depending on the RC constant of the cap you want it to go long enough so that the cap is fully charged. So I'm just saying charge it for 8,000 microseconds. You could probably get away with like a thousand, maybe even less. And then this is just, so I, I'm actually, I mean, I left the charging in there for a, a full second, but as I was saying, you could, you know, you just need to get the cap charged, however long that takes, however many microseconds. And then this is, just so that the switches have time to shut off so that they're they're not still on when you discharge the cap you want the cap isolated i gave it 2000 microseconds um, you could probably get away with 50. maybe it depends on the speed of your switches maybe even 40 or 20. probably 50 would be fine but maybe even 20. and then here is where you discharge the cap so let's go back and i'm discharging it for a variable called on time and then I just shut it off for on time too. That we're actually going to leave it off for two seconds after on, you know, after we shut it down, just so that we can see the reading on the meter. So let's go back to we calculated that as the resonant frequency, that as wave crest to wave crest. So if we divide that by two, that's where the cap should be most negative. So that's 0.966 milliseconds, so 966 microseconds. Go back here, Let's scroll up. We've defined on time as an integer, 966 I just put in there. And delay for microseconds of 966. So what happens when you put this cap through a coil? Here's what happens. Charges up, and it goes negative. Woo! Unbelievable. Isn't that kind of neat? So let's let's just turn it up to 10, and this will give us an idea of the Q factor. So I've turned the power supply up to 10, and it flips negative to about negative 7.2. And if I fiddled around, you know, it's probably like negative 7.3 and negative 7.4 or something like that. But it, you know, that's that's pretty good. That's how much it flipped negative. Now, let's suppose we divide that 966 in 2. Now, it would be uh, 450, 900, 483. I think that's right. Now, we should see the cap go to 0 or around there. I mean, again, 
So yeah, negative 0.02. So that, I mean, that's what you would fiddle around with to get, you know, things dialed in. Now, let's take the 966 and times it by 2. So, 966 times 2, 1800, 1932. And here, even though you're discharging the cap twice as long, four times as long as where we see it going to zero, if my hunch is right, it's not going to discharge all the way, seemingly, to zero, right? Yeah, see now it's now it's going from nine to six point seven, ten to six point seven, or five point eight. I'm not sure it, it's there long enough with that small cap for this this cheap meter to get a good reading. So you can see what I'm talking about there is that the cap, I mean, it's not that it only discharged from 10 volts to 6 volts, it's done a whole cycle. It went from 10, as we saw, to 0. We didn't give a darn about 0. Went negative, went back to 0, and now it's gone back and trying to get back to 10 volts, and it made it all the way back to about 6 volts. So that's a, that's a, a resonant um, LC tank circuit. Now we are all set to have fun with the uh, conventional and a bitoroidal or motionless electric generator style transformer. 